Ireland is an old country, a very old country, famous for its oral storytelling. It's a place full of myths and legends, often linked to its beautiful landscapes and natural features. Join me in this video where I'm going to go over 25 creatures that you'll find in Irish folklore. The Lannan She, meaning fairy lover, is a creature in the form of a beautiful woman, and she's known for taking on a human male lover. These male lovers go on to live very brief, but also highly inspired lives. She becomes their inspiration, the Gaelic muse. These men might use this inspiration to paint, to write, to compose, but they're sure to die young. The Lan and She feeds off their energy, ensuring an early death. If the men refuse the love of this creature, then she must become their slave, but this rarely happens, for who could refuse such beauty? The Dullahan is a terrifying harbinger of death. He's seen riding on a black horse, thundering through the Irish countryside, or as a coachman driving his death coach or hearse pulled by six black horses and stopping outside the homes of those whose death approaches. His severed head is an awful sight to behold, with fiery eyes and pale stretched skin. In one legend, the death coach would run back and forth from Castle Hyde to a glen beyond the village of Ballyhooley in County Cork. Nearby, in the town of Donorail, it was said that the Dullahan would visit all the houses in succession, and whichever occupant dared to open the door would be splashed with a basin of blood by the coachman, marking them for death. If you meet this creature while out one night, you stand no chance of outrunning him. However, if you have some gold in your possession, maybe a ring or a coin, then the horseman will likely vanish, and you'll live to see the dawn. The Merrow shares many characteristics with the Mermaid and the Selkie. Female Merrow have the appearance of a beautiful woman from the waist up, and a fish-like waist down. Merrow men, on the other hand, are very ugly, with a red nose, pig-like eyes, and an awful snout. This might be why the Merrow women seek partners on land, becoming deeply attached to human men, and even having children with them. But, despite how much they may love their husbands, the Merrow will inevitably always return to the sea, unable to resist their instincts. The Merrow wear a special hat which enables them to dive beneath the waves, and if they lose this cap, it's said that they'll also lose their power to return beneath the water. Their human lover will thus try to keep her hat well hidden to ensure that she won't leave him. The Banshee is one of the most famous creatures in Irish folklore. She'll be seen at night, combing her long hair or scrubbing clothes. Her mournful keening or wailing screaming at night was believed to foretell the death of a member of the family of the person who heard the spirit. She wears a grey cloak over a green dress. Her eyes are red from continual weeping, but sometimes the Banshee assumes the form of a sweet singing virgin of the family who died young, or a young woman that died in childbirth. It's said that the Banshee will only lament the death of pure Irish families, not those with Anglo-Saxon or Norman ancestry, and many old Irish families have a Banshee connected with them. The Banshee even follows them to the New World if they've migrated. The late actor Robert Hardy once said that if you don't believe in ghosts, a visit to Ireland might change your mind. Spirits of the deceased, the restless dead, can be found in every Irish county. If you find yourself in Bonamargy Friary, outside of Ballycastle, you may encounter the ghost of Julia McQuillan, the Black Nun, who appears if you perform a certain ritual around her grave. Or, maybe you'll come across Moor Hall in County Mayo, built on cursed land, where ghostly laughter and singing can be heard, as well as catching a glimpse of eerie shadows. Castles in Ireland are very common locations for sighting ghosts, such as Clifton Castle in Galway, said to be haunted by the spirits of the poor and dying who took shelter in the grounds of the castle during the time of the Great Famine.
The leprechaun is famous the world over. This sprite has the appearance of a small old man, often with a cocked hat and leather apron. Leprechauns are cobblers by trade, living in solitude, making and mending shoes and brogues. They have in their possession a pot of gold and, if captured and threatened, the leprechaun may reveal the hiding place of his treasure, or grant the captor three wishes in return for his release. However, he's no fool. He'll often trick his captor in a clever and menacing way, enabling him to escape and the gold to remain undiscovered. In one story, the leprechaun is forced to reveal the spot in a huge field where his treasure's buried, but the captor doesn't have a shovel, so he takes a handkerchief and ties it to a stick, pushing it into the ground above where the gold lies so he can remember the spot. When he returns with his shovel, the leprechaun has covered the field in hundreds, if not thousands, of identical sticks with handkerchiefs attached to them, making the task impossible. Fairies, the good folk, the little people, are found in many countries, but they're most famously associated with the Emerald Isle. They reside in the hills, the meadows, the forests, and the fairy mounds, which even today, people keep good distance from and don't disturb. Their nature varies greatly, with some being friendly and helpful, and others being mischievous, cruel, and dangerous. They're depicted as generally being very beautiful, and can range in height from normal human size all the way down to three inches. Some fairies are known to kidnap children and replace them with a changeling, a substitute left behind while they carry the human child off to their mounds and off to the other world. Some think that the Tuatha de Danann, the magical race that inhabited Ireland before the Irish, were driven underground and became what we know as the fairy folk. The puka are shape-shifting creatures that can take on the appearance of horses, cats, dogs, hares and goats. In County Down, it manifested as a short goblin who demands a share of the harvest. In County Leash, it appears as a monstrous bogeyman. In Waterford and Wexford, the puka appears as an eagle with a huge wingspan, while in Roscommon, it appears as a black goat. In their true form though, they appear as small sprites with black or white fur. One of the favourite pastimes was to entice humans onto their backs while in the form of a wild horse and to give them a terrifying journey, but never to kill them. The rider may be able to take control of the puka though by wearing sharp spurs, using those to prevent being taken or to steer the creature in the direction they want. Despite its taste for mischief though, the puka is generally considered to be benevolent. They can take on human form and give prophecies and even advice to lead people away from harm. The Cluricon is a mischievous creature known for his love of drinking, residing in breweries and wine cellars. He's described as a little man, measuring six inches in height with a face like a withered apple. He has twinkling eyes and a nose that's red and purple from heavy drinking. He wears a red nightcap, a short leather apron, light blue stockings, and shoes with large silver buckles. In one story, a cluricorn named Naganine haunts the wine cellar of an Irish lord, drinking everything in sight and playing frightening pranks on the servants. When he's discovered by the master of the house, Naganine talks him out of moving elsewhere by implying that he would simply move with him. He also carries a magical purse which contains a shilling that always returns to the purse no matter how often it's spent. Or, the purse may always be full of money, and for this reason, people will often try to capture the Cluricorn, much like the Leprechaun. The Far Goethe, the hungry man, stalks Ireland during times of famine, begging from house to house for something to eat. According to some people, he rises from the hungry grass, which curses anyone who walks over it to starvation. Others say that the Far Goethe is the ghost of a man who starved to death close to a fairy mound. Whatever he is though, he appears skin and bones, dressed in rags with long dirty fingernails and carrying an arms bowl. There is a way to protect yourself from this nightmarish creature though, charity. You see, those who feed him whatever they can are thanked and rewarded with good fortune, while those who don't, especially if they laugh at him or try to harm him, are cursed at first with bad luck, and then, eventually, starvation.
The Darug Dua is a vampire from the county of Waterford. There was once a beautiful young woman that had the attention of every man that set eyes upon her, but she was happy enough courting a local peasant, a match that her father did not happily accept, and he set about organising an arranged marriage to a wealthy clan chieftain. Despite how much the young girl begged her father, he wouldn't change his mind. The wedding took place, and her new husband turned out to be more abusive than she ever could have imagined. The poor girl was locked away, and only used as a plaything for the chieftain. And her depression and loneliness and total lack of hope ensured that she wasted away after she stopped eating and drinking. Before she died, she vowed revenge on those that had ruined her life, and parted her from her true love. Her body was barely cold in the ground when she rose up, returned to her family home, and drained the life out of her father. Then, she paid a visit to her husband, finding him surrounded by women, laughing and drinking. She lunged forward and drained every ounce of blood from his body. These two murders filled her with a sadistic bloodlust. Her revenge had come at a price. She was unsatisfied and used her beauty to prey upon young men, luring them to their demise with seduction. The Mucky is a 30 foot long serpent that's said to reside in the murky waters of the lakes of Kalani. Interest in the Mucky spiked in 2003 when scientists carried out a series of sonar scans on the Kalani lakes to learn more about the fish populations. However, these scans revealed something very odd. They detected a large mass in the lakes, which many thought was the Mucky. The name comes from Mucross Lake, with the IE suffix added to mimic the Scottish Nessie. Despite this though, Mucky hasn't enjoyed the popularity of the monster in Loch Ness. The Duvarku resembles both a dog and an otter, but is much larger. It has a white pelt, black ear tips, and a black cross shape on its back. Its pelt is often thought to be much darker though, due to the murky water that it resides in. Little is known about this creature, but there is a gravestone in County Latrum that relates to a death of a local woman at the hands of this creature. In 1722, Grace McLaughlin went down to Glenade Loch to wash some clothes. Her husband Terence rushed to the shore after hearing her scream and found a mutilated body with the Dovaku sleeping on top of her. Terence ran home, grabbed his dagger and killed the creature, and as it died allowed a scream to its mate who soon rose from the lock, but Terence managed to kill this one too after a long and bloody battle. Giants are well known all over the world, appearing in the lore and legend of countless cultures. And one of the most famous giant stories takes place in County Antrim. The giant Finn McCool was said to have built a huge causeway connecting Ireland with Scotland so that he could cross the sea and face off against his rival Ben and Donna. But when Finn had built this causeway and crossed, he saw that Ben and Donna was enormous and would surely beat him with ease. Finn disguised himself as a baby, and when Ben and Donna crossed into Ireland, he was tricked into thinking that this supposed baby was real, and that his father Finn would be home soon and would crush him. Ben and Donna fled, destroying the bridge behind him. The Slua, meaning army or host or crowd, are one of the most terrifying and grotesque creatures in Irish folklore. Now from a distance, they may just look like a flock of ravens, but these are the souls of the restless dead, cursed to reside in the darkness of our world, having been cast out of the other world, riding on the winds in search of human souls to feast upon. They'll swarm their helpless victims, carrying them off, and then another soul will join the ranks of the damned. They're mostly attracted to those close to death, and many an island would keep the windows of their homes tightly shut if someone inside was ill, so as to keep them safe from the slur. The Arvatak, meaning dwarf, is an undead and almost vampiric creature. There was once a cruel and wicked dwarf that was skilled in magic and warfare, and he was eventually slain by a rival chieftain. He was buried standing up, but the very next day he was seen again in the places that he was known to frequent, more cruel and violent than ever. Once more, the chief killed the dwarf and buried him in the same way, only for him to rise once more and spread his terror far and wide. 
the chieftain consulted a druid and was told to bury him upside down when next he slays this creature, which he did, and in so doing, the creature's magical powers were subdued. You can still see the stone that was placed above his grave in County Derry. The Olfisht, meaning Great Worm, is a type of water dragon or sea serpent found in the rivers of Ireland and in the sea surrounding the country. Similar to the worms of English folklore, these creatures would leave chaos and destruction in their path, consuming cattle, sometimes even people. In one story, a girl named Shannon, the granddaughter of the sea god Mananan MacLear, angers the Salmon of Knowledge by teasing it and throwing stones at it, and in revenge, the fish summons the Olfisht and commands it to attack the girl, which it does, and kills her. The Fetch are islands equivalent of the Doppelganger. Depending on whether you see the Fetch in the morning or the evening, it may bring good or bad fortune, but generally the Fetch is considered a very bad omen. It takes on the form of someone that's about to die, and will display on their body the way in which this death will come about. For example, someone that will die in a fire may see the fetch covered in burns, and someone that was due to die in battle may catch a glimpse of themselves with a stab wound to the chest. The Far Darug is regarded by some to be an evil relation of the Leprechaun, since it's similar in appearance. It wears a red cape and a red hat, which is how it gets its name, which translates to the Red Man. They enjoy practical jokes and mischief, but this goes beyond innocent pranks that other creatures are prone to doing. The Far Darug will swap babies with changelings, much like the fairy folk do. They'll also kidnap people and cause nightmares in children. The Glass Scavlin is a legendary green cow known for its fertility and bounty that produces endless quantities of milk. But, it wasn't just the quantities of milk that was impressive, it was also the beautiful taste. In different versions of the story, the cow is owned by a hero figure, but it's stolen by Baelor, the leader of the Fomorians, and the hero must embark on a quest to take it back. The Joint Eater is an invisible creature that takes on the form of a newt, and when they catch a glimpse of somebody sleeping by a stream or lake, they'll crawl into their mouth, and from that point on will consume half of the food that their chosen victim eats. For this reason, the person with a Joint Eater inside them will never get fat and will always be hungry, even after a large meal. In one story, a man that had one of these creatures inside him came up with a plan to rid himself of it. He ate a large quantity of salted meat and then lay down by a stream, and the joint eater inside him crawled out to drink some water. Before it had a chance to crawl back inside him, the man fled, having learned a valuable lesson. Will o' the wisp are ghostly lights that appear at night floating above land or water, most commonly over swamps. There's a lot of mystery attached to these creatures. Some believe them to be spirits of the dead, and others think they're fairies or elves, but whatever they are, they take on the appearance of lanterns and torches. They lead lost travellers astray, making them lose their path, and often trapped in a bog or led over a cliff. The Bananak are quite similar to the Banshee. These shrieking female spectres will fly over battlefields and scenes of chaos and death. Screaming and howling as men are slain and many more souls make their way to the other world. The Farlier, the Grey Man, is a mysterious creature that lurks in the fog and mist in the coastal areas of Ireland. Some think he's a type of fairy and others think he could perhaps be an ancient deity of some kind, but regardless, he hates humans and takes great pleasure in causing much misery and fear. His description is debated and unknown, with reports often conflicting. He appears as a fog, or a ragged shadow, or wearing a grey cloak or a misty robe. Where the grey man is, there's always a cold and clammy chill in the air. He uses the mist to conceal rocks by the coastline, causing ships to be wrecked and further inland he may use it to hide pathways and 
disorient travellers, even leading them over cliffs. In North Antrim, being led off the cliffs by the Falia is particularly feared, for this is one of his favourite haunts. Here you'll find a gap, lying across which is a large flat stone. This landmark is known as the Grey Man's Path, and locals will go out of their way to avoid it, especially if the weather is bad. The Bradon Fiasa, the Salmon of Knowledge, contained the wisdom of the universe, having ate the nine hazelnuts that fell into the Well of Wisdom. It was said that whoever ate the salmon would acquire all the knowledge in the world. There was an old poet named Finn Eckes that tried to catch the fish for seven years, desperate for this knowledge. Finn caught the salmon and gave the fish to Finn McCool, his young servant, the same Finn that I mentioned earlier from the Giant's Causeway. He was told to cook it, but to not eat any of it. So Finn cooked the salmon, turning it over and over, but when he touched the fish with his thumb to see if it was cooked, he burned his finger on a drop of hot cooking fish fat. Finn sucked on his finger to ease the pain, but little did he know that all the salmon's wisdom had been concentrated into that one drop of fat. When he brought the cooked fish to Finn Eckes, his master saw that the boy's eyes shone with a previously unseen wisdom. Finn Eckes asked young Finn if he had eaten any of the salmon. The boy said no, but explained what had happened. Finn Eckes realised that Finn had received the wisdom of the salmon, and so gave him the rest of the fish to eat. Finn McCool ate the salmon and, in so doing, gained all the knowledge of the world. For the rest of his life, Finn could draw upon this knowledge merely by biting or sucking his thumb. So that concludes my list of 25 creatures from Irish folklore. If you're interested in more videos like this, but for different countries, you might like 25 creatures of English and Scottish folklore. But if it's more Irish stories you want, then take a look at my channel for stories of giants, ghosts, and legendary figures. As always, I'm grateful to my patrons that help me make content like this and travel to many of the locations you see on screen. And be sure to subscribe, because my next video like this will take a look at 25 creatures from Welsh folklore.